Understanding the recommendations made by audit.io. After you've run your search, as we showed in previous videos, you're going to be given a list of recommendations based on the average of the top results versus your URL. Now, <clears throat> each of these is going to have its own specific recommendation, either to do something, to increase something, decrease something, or to leave it alone. However, it's important to understand that a tool is just that, a tool. It's going to give you the raw data and you're going and it's going to make suggestions based on that data. But you need to also use some expertise and some de decision making of your own when implementing it. I'm going to make a separate video on how to actually implement some of these, but I wanted to walk you through the results here and kind of just give you give you an idea of what to expect. Let's zoom in just a little bit. The total word count, I think that we've covered what that means. That means the word count on the page. In this case, we're going to be using this site as an example. This is just a test slash dummy site I have set up. Uh, and it's MyrtleBeachPainters.net. What it's telling us is that the average top result after we've... Rem let, well, you know what? Let's go ahead and remove some of the ones that we don't want there to make sure that we get the best data possible. And I covered this in a separate video as well. Just going to remove some of those. So we get an accurate picture of what we want to do. Okay. So you see that actually impacted the averages quite a bit so it's important to remove the ones that you don't want there so let's look at our recommendations again total word count our total word count is 548 and the average is 838 in this case I probably would add another section or another paragraph because I think the content is a little thin so I, what I would probably do is just add another section and that's probably what we'll do in a separate video and just add another 300 or so words to it, so 290. So that that's pretty self-explanatory. This one, reduce, reduce the keyword usage. It's saying the average top search result shows it at least one time, and ours contains it five times. That means that Myrtle Beach Painters shows up on the page five times, and the average is one. So we would want to reduce that because that is a bit excessive, actually. Now, this is where it gets a little tricky. Keyword density is the percentage of time of the text that is the keyword that is the keyword. So if you had a thousand words and your keyword appeared ten times, it'd be ten percent. If it appeared one time, it'd be one percent. If those if that math is wrong, I think you get the idea. However, that's obviously going to change if you increase the word count or decrease the word count or increase or decrease the number of times. So do these two first and then see if the keyword density is close. You may not be able to get this exactly right and still have your page make sense, but you want to get that as close as possible. And in this case, I think that that wouldn't be that hard because removing this is going to decrease that and adding that won't affect it that much. So that's that. Is the exact keyword in the URL? This is a major ranking factor. In our case, we have an what's called an exact match domain, which means that... Uh, it means that the keyword is the domain name. If it wasn't, what we could do, suppose this was like Premier Painters or something, you could do a slash and then make your page Myrtle Beach Painters. So you could do something like that as well. So if you wanted to. Now, you may that may not be practical if your site's already exists or if it's ranking a little bit but not ideal or not completely you may not want to do that. It's going to be situational, but that's what that means. And if you can do that, you should. <clears throat> is the exact title, the exact keyword in the meta title. This is what shows up in Google when someone searches that site. So let me show you. So for our site, it, what you can see is ranking. It looks like hey, number one, two, three, four, five, six, number six or seven, depending on where you search from is ranking pretty well and then the key, the meta title is this Myrtle Beach Painters 
So that is our exact keyword in the meta title. I strongly recommend when possible to have that there. Is it? So that's what key, exact keyword in meta title means. And it looks like the competitors have that. So we want to add that. Is it in the meta description is similar to the meta title. It's this portion here. And as you can see, very few of them have it in the meta description. In fact, none of them do. So what we would, and we don't have it in ours either. So we're good there. This one is where a lot of people are going to get tripped up. So the data tells us that none of the the top results have the exact keyword in the H1 tag. That's what the data says, and we don't necessarily want to go meddling with the data. We want to give you an accurate picture of what is going on with the, one, with the sites that are ranking. This is where this is a tool, and you have to make a decision and use your expertise a little bit on whether you want to add one or not, because it is generally accepted SEO practice, both from theory and from testing that having your keyword in an H1 is a ranking factor. However, that's not what's working here. That doesn't mean that it won't help. It just means that none of the sites that are winning are doing that. And that's what the data is representing. And that's what we're giving you. So I would personally try it with an H1 and see if that makes a difference. If it does, then great. If it makes it worse, then you know what, you know, to remove it. If it doesn't change it, then it kind of just makes, kind of just uh, go by what makes sense for your page. So that's one that's going to be a little contentious for some people, but that's the way, the reason that it is the way it is. We are giving you data and giving you what the data suggests that you do, but we're not telling you what we think you should do. So it's kind of up to you to use a little bit of expertise at that point. How many images are present on page? This one can be a little bit of a pain to get right because 33 images, if you don't have that many, you obviously, you can't, it's going to be difficult to add another 22. If you have more and you can do them stylistically, you should. So that's kind of your call, but that's how what that means is that most of the sites that are ranking well have a lot more images than we do. We're probably not going to add that many more, but you can still try to get some more in there if it makes sense. This one is the alt tag in an image. If you want to inspect an image, you can see, uh, let's see, it doesn't even have an alt tag. All right. Well, the alt tag is what will show up if in, if the image is not able to render for some reason. So it looks like, the top result. Um, it's the the average of the top search results contains one image with an alt tag, and it should read with the, the keyword in the alt tag. And yours, and we have two. So what I'll probably do is just remove one of those to get that in line. And then image with a file name. When images are uploaded, the file name can uh, can be the keyword. It's, this one's kind of hard to change once it's in place, but this can help too. So if you want to replace your image, if, if the data dictated that you replace your image with one that, that has the keyword in the file name, you could do that and it would help the relevance of your page and as well as having that image rank in Google images. So this video was a little longer. Uh, I hope that was helpful. The next one's going to be even longer. We're going to actually go through and implement some of this to give you kind of an idea of how you should use this data. But this is what these suggestions mean and they this is based on the data of what's working you can choose to use it you can choose to use some of it use none of it use all of it but this is going to give you in a nice easy to understand way what you can do to bring your site in line with what's already working if you have any questions about that let me know